Hello, my name is Mike Avery from Cadence Design Systems. In this video, I'm going to talk about instance-based binding in System Verilog. So firstly, let's remind ourselves of what a binding is. Binding is a way in System Verilog of creating an instance of a module inside of another one without requiring access to the module to which you're binding. Typically, this is used to bind a module containing verification code, and particularly assertions, covers, assumes, and associated Verilog auxiliary code, which is helper code for the properties, and attach it to the design module which we wish to verify. Here we have an example where we have a module called M1 prop. Notice it only has inputs. This only contains verification code, our assertions in this case. So it's not going to be driving RTL, therefore there will be no outputs ever in these kinds of assertion modules. And inside of those is our properties which are referring to the signals in the port list. Obviously if we refer to signals which weren't in the port list then we make this non-portable now. And the whole point of having these assertion modules, just like UVCs inside of a UVM test bench, is that we have a module we can instantiate and connect to whatever it is we wish to verify in a reusable way. This module M1 here, and notice the color coding to make it easier on your eyes to associate one thing with the other. We have inputs and outputs on our design module. This is RTL code inside of here. And what we wish to do is take this module M1 prop and create an instance of it inside of M1 and then attach the relevant signals inside of the scope of the design module. And the bind keyword allows us to do this. So the way in which we use this syntax we say bind to, and then we specify which design module do we wish to bind to. We then give the name of the module we wish to bind to it, and MP1 is the name of the instance which will get created. So just to remind ourselves what we're doing, we're taking this assertion module and we're creating an instance of it inside of this design module, and here is where we name that instance. Okay, that name doesn't exist anywhere else. And in the port list, if we're doing it like this, we're just doing associative kind of connections for the ports. We could put any kind of system verilog port mapping here, but if we do it like this, then those signal names names are in scope of the design module we're binding to. So notice the green matches green up here. So given this bind statement, if we implement this, we're expecting rec in the design module to get associated with input A on the assertion module, ac with B, and the signal named CLK with a signal named with exactly the same name, CLK. Now with that bind statement there, what we're doing is we're binding to all instances of module M1, however many there are anywhere in our design. We may not wish to do this, however, it might not be convenient, or we wish to reduce the overhead on the simulator or whatever tool we're using, or we're only interested in one particular channel in a host of channels. The way in which we can do that is with instance-based assertion binding, and here's one example. But we'll get onto the syntax of that in a moment, but for the time being, let's just show ourselves what this looks like in the hierarchy. Here's the same code as before. We have a module top, and there we have an instance of this M1 module named M and the number one, and another instance named M and the number two. So there's two instances of the same design module here. And when I have this bind statement, it creates an instance named MP1 in both of them. So that's what my hierarchy will look like after that bind statement. If I had another module, M3, M4, M5, and 6, and so on, each one of those would have an instance named MP1 inside of it. But what if I didn't want an instance inside of M1? I only wanted an instance inside of M2. How could I do that? But before we show that, one important point about this is that bind statement here does not need to be in the same scope as these instances. Okay, it could literally be anywhere. What we see here is in a single file. Notice this is not inside of a module or any other kind of hierarchical block. It's in a file by itself, so this would be in compilation scope. And we have two bind statements, both of which would be perfectly valid to write. I've commented out the bottom one, as you can see. This one that's commented out, if I wish to use that one instead of the one above it, notice when I say the keyword bind here, the next thing that comes here is a absolute path from the top of the hierarchy and the rest of it is the same as we've seen before so what I'm doing is I'm binding to the specific instance with that instance name a instance of this module this is the name of the instance that gets created and here's my port mapping so other than this part it's the same as we saw before now this has several drawbacks doing it in this manner one of which is that you have to know the absolute path up front ie before you compile which might not be convenient and is potentially error prone and secondly if there was three instances you wish to bind to then you would need need three separate bind statements, each of which had this absolute path. Dollar root and things like this do not work. To be frank, the language reference model isn't that clear on what works and what does not with instance-based binding, which is why I've made this video. Another way of doing it, which is slightly more convenient in my opinion, is like this. Bind, and that is the module we're binding to now. The rest of it is the same as the statement on the line below. So what we're saying is every module which is at lev2 mod, and whose instance name is lev2 underscore inst j, I bind one of these prop checkers to it with the instance name shown there. Now this will not work if I put this in a module i.e. in a scope where there is not a lev2 underscore inst j. This only works because it's in compilation scope, it's outside of any other scope, it's just in a single file by itself. 
So if I deleted this line that's highlighted right now, that single line would get compiled. Notice it's in a file, just a .sv extension. I just compile this with all the rest of my source code files. How this looks then in hierarchy, if we have a look at the top here, what we've got is that's our top level. And if I were to send this to a source browser, I can see here I've got three instances of a lev1 mod all with different instance names instance rst and we have another kind of lev1 mod which is called lev1a inst v so if we look inside of one of these lev1 instances here what i find is i have two lev2 mods with instance names j and k and this other one which i've made a different kind of hierarchy here we've added a couple more layers in here so this is just to show that any module with an instance name lev2 inst j gets one of these modules bound to it so if we were to look at this we we can see that this is the same module so let's pick on one of them instance r for example that instance there is a lev2 mod and inside it is some you know, just simple rtl code and this instance here is the same module exactly as we can see now one of them has one of these assertion modules bound to it because it's Instance name is lev2 underscore inst j, and the other one doesn't because it doesn't have that name. So let's just go back to our file a minute. Because it had the instance name lev2 inst j, that's why it ends up with one of these assertion checkers bound to it. So if we go to the other place in the hierarchy, so at a different hierarchical level, we've got the same situation here. We have deeper down in the hierarchy, we have another thing called lev2 inst j, with a different hierarchical kind of layout compared to these modules up here, lev1 inst r, s, and t. And again, we have the one with instance J has one of these things bound to it. So you'll notice these green ticks here. The reason for this, if I click it and send that's the source browser, is that I've made this a checker. So I could have replaced the word checker with module here and end checker with end module. And it will behave exactly the same other than I wouldn't see that green tick. So the green tick indicates it's a checker and that makes it obvious to any reader and the tool itself that this is a verification module, not part of the design. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Uh, thank you for listening and goodbye. Thank you.